I am also showing you a traditional bell, very famous one from the Philadelphia, the Liberty Bell. In any case, I have my serious doubts, uh, Mohamed Firoz Gari continues, I have a serious doubt if ever we or Hindus etc. are following the Roman Catholic Church of practice of ringing the bells. It is almost like placing cart before the horse. As advice, the above is a merely overheard opinion and I'm waiting for expert opinions from the revered Varada Stujis and learned religious authorities from Mumbai. Page 52, uh, slide 52. I'm just showing you that modern metal Havani mortar and lalo as it is used in Yasna ceremony. In fact, you see it in our pictures and it is in front of me right now, uh, right here. Inverted Havanim and Lalo as a precursor to a bell with a question mark and exclamation and the famous Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. I am on 52 going to 53 and then when I was in Persepolis, in the Persepolis Museum, I was really amazed to see these two uh, samples. The left hand side is the Havani mortar and Lalo used in Yasna ceremony made from stone in the Havanian times. And then on the right is the Havanim and Lalo used in Yasna ceremony made from bronze in the Havanian times, 470 BC. Slide number 54. Here is a depiction of the Persepolis carving where at the uh, Mobids are carrying Barsam, as you see with the third figure from the left. Havanim, which is like a fourth figure from the left, and other religious implements made from stone or metal in Akhamanian times. This is the depiction of Jamshedi Nowroz, when Darius I used to meet all his people from all over his 26 atropies, coming over to celebrate the Nowroz, to greet the Nowroz, to see the Shahen Shah, and brought some kind of gift for Shahensa and in return received a gift from Shahensa to them. It's a wonderful depiction and a thank God it is still preserved. I am on slide 55 now. So now we come to our boy ceremony and these are the boy ceremonies in uh, San Jose de Reme, upper left. My friend uh, Mohamed Koba Jamshed performing the boy ceremony. In the lower left is the Dallas Daremer boy ceremony. Uh, the boy was performed at the inauguration by my very good Mobit friend, Porus Balsara. And on the right hand side is the Daremer boy ceremony, which we perform in the last Fezana AGM. And I was fortunate enough, they let me do the boy ceremony. Thank you for the same. So now I'm on 56. And let me just first explain what kind of things are done in this boy ceremony, especially in Atashbera. So, as a uh, background, the boy ceremony in all eight Indian Atashbera, there are four in Bombay, one in Udwada, one in Nausari, two in, uh, five in Bombay, one in Udwada, one in Nausari, and two in, uh, in a Surat. There may be seven, I'm not so sure. Okay. At first, the boy ceremony in all this is done at the change of uh, Ga five times a day. First, the Mobed enters the Sanctum Sanctorum, cleans up Ghani of the Pacha side, places long sandalwood pieces on the Atash in a crisscross pattern, forming what we call Machi or the throne. In Irasha Atasbaram, nine pieces are used. Dadi Shad Atashbaram in Mumbai, five of them, this is a Kadmi Atashbaram. Nausari, Surat and other Atashbarams, it is six pieces are used. In Iran Atashbaram, after the nine pieces are placed, the Mobid washes the pedestal and then places small pieces of sandalwood on Atash and then rings one bell after taking Dada or Mazda's name, one bell initially. This first bell is the signal to all Vedins that the gay has changed and it is time to pray in the new gay. 
Then in all Atashbarams, after a certain ritual, the Mobit starts Atashnyas and at the words Dushmata, Dujukta, Dujvarshta, bad thoughts, bad words and bad deeds, he strikes the bell three times each. Uh, we're reciting each one of the three words, three times, so nine in all. In Kadmi Atashbarams, the Mobit strikes the three bells in the middle of the Atashnyas, reciting three sentences each. Saucha buya myanamane, much saucha buya myanamane, raucha buya myanamane, and repeats it for each of the three Atashnyas he prays. In Adaryans and Dargans, you are only supposed to have the bell ring three times, not nine times during a boy ceremony. I'm on slide 57. I was appointed uh, by my very good scholarly friend, Gustav Pantaki of Toronto. Gustav is an amazing uh, scholar, but uh, he doesn't, he's very shy about it, but I have to grant him the best scholarship he has. He said that solely we were talking about the meaning of the boy ceremony and that Suji Dabu has written a small booklet in 1946-47 when he was the principal of my own alma mater, Kama Atunan Institute, and I was there at that time. He mentions, and I have to give you the translation of the Gujarati book for what he says about the meaning and explanation of this boy ceremony. He said, in almost all religions there are prayers to exercise bad spirits from surroundings. The Hin in Hindu religion there is Gantarva ceremony, puja to get rid of bad spirits, Bhut Pishach, by calling their names. In Christians they do similar ceremonies by ringing the bells in a church. In our Zoroastrian religion in the Yasna ceremony, Yasna 27, Avesta prayers are recited while striking pestle, lalo, inside metal mortar, havanim, while reciting the word snathai. Snathai means get rid of, and we are getting rid of the devas, the evil spirits of bad temper, hatred, etc. So in the boy ceremony, the ringing of the bells while striking dushmata, dujukta, dujvashta is to remove bad thoughts, words, and deeds from the environment. There is another reason, according to Dastuji, for this ringing of the bells. In Muslim religion at the time of prayers five times a day, guess where the borrowed must have been? The muezzin shouts from the minaret, Allahu Akbar, God is great, to let the faithful know that it is time for the prayers. Similarly, the ringing of these bells also is an announcement to all Zoroastrians that it is time to start the prayers in the new God. The English word bang, according to Dastuji, is similar to the Pelvi word bang, and Pelvi is such a peculiar language that each letter can be pronounced different ways, so this bang could also be read as boy. Interesting idea. I'm on 58. He continues, in the first place when Zartusht is in homes or on street, hear the peal of the bell from the Atashbiram boy ceremony, they are supposed to think of getting rid of all the evil thoughts, words and deeds from their minds and in Hamazori cooperate, become a humkar as we call it, to get rid of them together. Because of this many used to snap their fingers while reciting these words. You may have seen that when some of the old people do the Kasti ceremony, at Dushmata, Dujukta, Dujwarsta, they snap the fingers. Secondly, this also gives a signal that in the court of Atas Parsha, that is interesting, when we came to India, we had no king, so we use our Atash in our Atash, Beram Atash, Aryanagyari as a Parsha, the king. There is a change of God at that time. And the Atas Padshah once again is ready to sit on his throne, which is what we call Machi. And all Hamdins should combine as one to welcome this enthronement. In fact, in ancient Iran, the Dargas all over the country also were a seat of judgment. 
This is where the, the Moabites or judges gave the judgment. And each gate, at each gate, a new judge presided in it, so the same judge won't do the same thing all day. Hence the ringing of the bells in Dargars in those times was a sign of heralding a new judge. Some scholars suggest that the word boy means fragrance, bui kushbu, and the ringing of the bells enhances the holy environment of Atas Parsha with the pure surroundings of fragrant frankincense. Kadmi Moabites do not ring the bells at Dushmata Dujukta Dujwarsta, but ring them while reciting the middle of the Atashnes invoking Beram Yazat. Beram Yazat is the angel of victory. And so ringing of the bells declares the victory of good over evil. In Hindu kingdoms, the change of certain time of day, Chogadyu, was heralded by a special ceremony puja of victory. I am going to slide 59 now. So, you know, in summary, with different aims, the Atravan Sahib in the inner sanctum, the Suji says, hopes to receive help from the Hamdins outside. And then whether these holy words are for driving away all evils, or to give signal for the prayer time, or to signal the victory, the ringing of the bell signals all faithful to combine in prayers in a joint humbandagi in all the homes and streets, creating a strong, prayerful environment similar to all the threads combining together to create a strong rope, or all the wires in barsam to create a strong barsam, and also, according to the Hindi proverb, everyone's came with only one burden, Sapki Lari Ekka Boj. The church, Christian churches, also ring the bells for different occasions, like calling the faithful for the prayer, announcing someone's death, celebrating a wedding, etc. So in summary, Dasuji Dabu says, ringing of the bells have threefold purpose. To call the faithful to the prayers, to exercise the evil spirits, to celebrate the enthronement and triumph of Atas Padsha Sahib. I think I will stop now and go to our uh, uh, Bandagi, Hum Bandagi, because it is almost getting 12 and I don't want to take too much time. We will do it the next time, the two of them. So, oh, one more thing, I'm sorry. I'm on slide number 60. You know, the Dadga boy bell was heralding a judge in the Dadga. But uh, if you remember, there is a story about Noshira Nadel. He installed the bell outside his palace that was struck for seeking justice from the emperor. What an what a amazing idea. Because he thought that his officers are not bringing all the people's uh, problems to him. So he did this in a straight way. He was called Khushru the One or Noshirwan Adel, the immortal just person or judge, legendary ruler. Adel means again just and many stories and legends for his legendary justice. Anyone can come to his palace and pull a chain connected to a large bell when he or she or it needed justice. He will bring the complainant to court and deliver the justice right then and there. Lo and behold, one time the bell rings, and who is uh, striking it? An old horse. He summoned all his officers to find out whose horse it was and why he's not taken care of. They found that he belonged to a prominent army officer who relinquished him in his old age. Kushru called the officer, reprimanded him, and made him take care of his horse royally until his death. What a way of doing justice. I just want to mention that the bells then are, have been used in the old times also for different purposes. Basically, in the, uh, all of our fire temples and then in the case of a wonderful Noshua Nadel to give justice to the people. It also said as a side note that Prophet Muhammad took pride in fact that he was born in the reign of Nashirwan Adel. 
I am on slide 60. I am now finished with the one. We will now go to the cyber humbandagi. And this is, uh, let me just continue on. This is, I think, uh, you have to move to the new slide for the Pandake, for the Bande Holland. And this will be slide number. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Uh, we will continue this next time, uh, I promise you, and we'll add another interesting subject to it. So we are coming to slide number 80, 89. Everybody has it? It's the agenda and the cyber humbandagi in English. Everybody there? Okay, we are now on slide number 90. We will be done in a minute. This is the background of why the Suji Dollar wrote that book, Homage unto Ramazda, so that you can pray every day in English with our religious background. So I am on slide number 91 for today's Hambandagi, the birth of Zarathustra. So please join me in praying this together in the cyberspace. Glorious springtime had come, and wide awake was the earth from its wintry sleep. Fields and forests that seemed dead and winter long were now blooming. Green grass carpeted the earth, and warbling birds and flocks and herds made merry on the grassy ground. Blades and ears bloomed into corn, and golden corn waved in fair fields. Smiling flowers shed 